Testing, testing. Hope the audio is fixed. Let me know, guys, if the audio is fixed. Sorry for the uh, technical difficulties. We had to cut midstream, and I'm re-live casting now. Uh, hopefully, my fellow viewers will be tuning in as they see that I'm back online. I'm going to pause here for a couple and see if I get my crew back. I mean, see if I get my audience back. Uh, if you're just tuning in, we're going to be taking a look at um, the house of Yoko or IOKO 1954 out of Italy. And in particular, the fragrance of I. Egocentric. We'll just call it egocentric, or it's going to get old real fast. Hi, Amy. Is the audio okay? I just had to cut midstream in my last uh, recent live cast, and we're recasting. Uh, if the audio is bad, please let me know, and I'll reboot the entire system. Great, fantastic. All right, I had a couple other guys. I hope they find their way back. Uh, Andre and me in Japan were presently here a minute ago. Uh, Andre and me in Japan, I hope you get back. I apologize. I rarely have audio technical difficulties with this unit here, but once in a blue moon, it happens. Sorry about that, guys. Anyways, we're just joining us again. We are looking to get today at the house of Yoko or IO.KO or IOKO 1954. They are based in Italy. And in particular, we're looking at the fragrance that is called egocentric, or technically it's I dot egocentric, but I'm not going to be saying that the whole way through, or it's going to get old real fast, and we're just going to call it egocentric. That's the scent. Uh, it is a tobacco-based scent. What else is new? That's the number one note and fragrance that I love the most, but it's certainly not the only note that I love, but I'm very partial to tobacco. Uh, in the near future, and I got these both from, uh, I believe, online from Door Perfumes. And I believe Door is either the money behind the brand of Yoko 1954, or at least they are a major distributor out of Italy and, and Europe and hence to the world. So after this, at some point, we'll be taking a look at uh, Luce Pura, uh, Accendis, or Accendis, however you want to say it. Down the road, this is, I am told, another phenomenal tobacco-based scent. Have not smelled that yet. Cannot at all speak from experience. But welcome back, Andre. Thanks so much. Sorry about the earlier technical difficulties. I hate dropping out in midstream. It just it really bugs me, but there's just no alternative, guys. Again, this is, you can purchase these online, guys, from Door Perfumes Direct from Italy. Uh, maybe some, some French. Boutique online as well can also, you know, distribute them. But that is the, they are at least the main distributor. I don't know that they are the actual parent house or not. They may be, but it's altogether, it's irrelevant. Again, Yoko 1954 of Italy. Now let's get to this house for a second. Then I'll talk about the fragrance. So uh, you probably already know this for those of you that are really niche and indie, uh, but Yoko 1954 was founded. Um, I don't really, I think it was founded in, uh, I mean, 2017 or 2016 in Italy, but at any rate, regardless of that, uh, the, the name is a wordplay on the founder Enzo Gallardi and uh, Enzo Gallardi. Uh, very famous in the in the field of international perfumery, especially Italian. He's done. He's the nose and the creator, but I believe he's the nose. If not, he's the artistic creative director for sure, behind brands like Boys 1920 and No, it is not Bois, which is French. This is an Italian brand, and it's just Boys 1920, B O I S, not B O Y S, and then also the brand of Profumo di Firenze. 1954 and also old photology. You can find more about those brands online or sites like Base Notes and Fragrantica and probably elsewhere. I think there's a perfume, something out of Europe that's starting to get a little bit popular now. I forget the exact name of the website. Anyways, moving on, they have currently seven fragrances in the house. Uh, they are all, to my knowledge, unisex. So there's nothing specifically male nor female. 
and which seems to be all the rage these days. There's very few releases currently from either niche indie or uh, designer, to my knowledge, that are just male. Or just, I'm not saying there's none. It just, just doesn't seem to be the order of the day. So you get egocentric that we're looking at today, again, tobacco based, Yokoro, Mirage 11, Mirage 23, respectively, Oud, Patchouli, and finally Utopia. Um, again, at some point in the future, we'll be taking a look at Luchapura or Luspura Accendis or Accendis, also tobacco based. We'll check that out down the road. Sounds fantastically intriguing. Can't wait to get my nose on that. Uh, speaking of this one, though, this was my scent of the day. And if we're going to be talking about it, they come in beautiful bottles. And if you watch Sebastian's channel, guys, I'm looking, feeling, smelling great. I highly, highly recommend all of you to subscribe to Sebastian's channel. He has phenomenal in-depth reviews on some designer, but he mainly specializes in niche and independent or indie. He does do a lot of designer stuff as well, but it tends to be a little bit more upper tier designer. But at any rate, if you've never heard of Sebastian or don't know the channel, please check him out on YouTube. I'm sure you'd appreciate it. Okay, these bottles are long and just beautiful, beautiful, classy works of art. Simple but elegant caps, kind of like a stepped circular pyramid, but upside down. Just very classy, kind of throwbacks to the 50s, 60s, or even the 20s in some respects. Um... In some ways. At any rate, uh, let's get to it. This is an oriental woody, I guess you could say. Um, there's a lot of leather in this guy. So if you don't like leather, steer clear, go no further. I'll just tell you right, right then and there, this has a pretty pungent animalic opening. Now, it's not all animalic and it's not overly pungent, but it's certainly there. And if you really, really hate leather, just... You're not going to like this at all because leather is a major component. Certainly, I'm not saying it's leather dominant. Uh, I'm not even saying it's leather overly heavy, but it's a major, major player for sure. Other notes for sure to keep watch of are raspberry. You're going to hit the raspberry guys. Hits you right away. I mean, right off the skin. I have a recent respray here. Again, this was my scent of the day. I'll tell you what this reminds me of in a weird, weird way. For any of you out there that have owned or tried or sampled Rasasi's infamously famous and beast mode fragrance, uh, La Yukawam, which is a raspberry tobacco, sort of their version of an amped up, even, I don't know, it's, it's, yeah, even much stronger, or at least that raspberry note of uh, tobacco vanille, Tom Ford's. This has a large chunk of La Yukawam's DNA present and accounted for, but I'm not saying it comes off, nor am I saying that the fragrance in total <clears throat> or in, in total smells like that. I'm certainly not suggesting that. This is much more refined. Uh, not that you know, La, La Yukawam is overly synthetic. I just, I, it's definitely synthetic, but uh, this has a lot of nuances, a lot. There's a lot going on in, in this fragrance as, as, contrasted to La Yukawam, right? But you do get the raspberry. You do sort of get the ashy, leathery note of tobacco uh, and those other types of notes that are present in Rasasi's wonderful and maybe too strong La Yukawam. But so moving on, you also get the beeswax. You're going to get a little note of incense. Eh, I wouldn't say little. It's little to medium. It's, it's present and accounted for. Uh, has quite a bit of ginger, but it's 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 not overly pungent. I would say it's kind of medium soft ginger. Again, the leather is very prominent. Uh, Gaiac or guayac wood is in here, so it's definitely got that woody component. Osmanthus. So there is a little interesting floral aspect to this scent. Uh, there's quite a bit of May rose. Um, it gives it a little bit of a Middle Eastern vibe. I'm not going to lie. I don't know if that's going to be a put off for some of you guys and gals out there, or guys in particular. A lot of guys, a lot of us guys don't like rose, right? I think it smells too feminine. But in a lot of fragrances these, these days, perfumers and noses are experimenting a lot with the note of rose. And I don't think it's overly powerful here. 
it's definitely accounted for. You will smell the May Rose. You will smell the Osmanthus. But I think uh, taken in total, it also has Oris, which has that little buttery, creamy, woodsy, um, yeah, almost. It just uh, yeah, Oris can smell like a lot of different things depending on how it's blended. But at any rate. It gives it a nice, smooth, creamy base. Um, benzoin is in here. What else is new? That's in everything these days. And then we do get, a, it's, yeah, we also get myrrh. Now the myrrh, wait, let me, wait, one more thing. Uh, there is vanilla in here. The vanilla in here, guys, don't worry if you're a vanilla hater. It's very, very mild, very soft. It's just sitting down in the background. I think maybe it comes out a little more in the deep dry down. It's not that big a player, at least not to my nose. Um, the myrrh is in here, but as well, I would say it's blended so effortlessly and it's so well with the other notes. It's You can detect it. It's there. It's very soft, just kind of rounding out that incense and almost sort of playing the role of like a baby soft ultra soft version of amber you know what i mean it has just like it's kind of like amber but way way softer and a little bit more incense -y, if that makes any sense i will also say strangely enough this almost seems to have a note of birch tar resin and i'm not the hugest fan i know that's all in vogue from a lot of niche and indie houses we're seeing a plethora of like smoky birch tar birch tar smoked birch birch leather and i'm starting to feel personally like it's a little bit overplayed a little bit over overdone that's just my personal two cents um okay things i like and things i didn't particularly like about this scent today and again this is fair and full disclosure this Again, it was only my first full day of wearing this scent. I don't have a long history with neither the brand of Yoko 1954 nor any other scents, much less this wonderful scent, which is, again, egocentric or I.egocentric. Oh, and one last note. I forgot. Balsam fur is in here. So I forgot about the fur. Yeah, yeah I could see it. It's in here. It's there. It's not that big a player. Whatever. Um Okay, things I like. I, I really, really appreciate the nuanced, elegant uh, elegance of the opening. The opening is very, very busy, but it's blended really, really well. Spectacular blending to the nose, whether it was uh, Signore Enzo Gallardi or, and our team. You know, bravissimo, bravo, fantastic. They, they, they really, really painted a gorgeous olfactory experience. That goes without question. These appear to be really natural, mostly natural ingredients, very, very organic, um, quite high dollar. It, this definitely smells very upscale. I, I feel like, because this is a lot of coin, guys and gals. This is a $300 bottle, full retail, full disclosure. This ain't for poor people. Just saying. I mean, you could save up, right? You could <laughs> save up for a rainy day. This is a lot of coinage for for most perfumes, and I'm not gonna lie. While I could easily pull the trigger on this right now for three hundred dollars, I'm not inclined to. And I'll tell you why. This this comes to the negative of the review. Not to offend the wonderful house and creative direction behind Yoko, 1954. Here's why I personally won't be pulling the trigger at $300 for a lovely bottle, indeed. Number one, first and foremost, I feel a performance. Let me just, yeah, let me just make it more succinct. Performance was an issue. Uh, I don't feel this pushed real hard past two hours. I'm not saying there was no push, right, past two hours. I I didn't really detect much active push past two hours. And while I do think it had decent sillage and minimally decent projection, 
uh, to the four hour mark, I don't think it got much past four hours at all. I feel like by the fifth hour, this had waned predominantly to a, to the dreaded skin scent, which is no bueno in my book. If, if I'm going to drop $300 on a, on a beautiful scent, not the perfect scent, we'll get into that in a minute, but beautifully crafted, no doubt. I'm sorry, brother and sister, you had better be pushing for the better part, better part of four hours, and I better smell you on my skin strongly and easily for eight to 12 hours. I think, would you guys agree that's fair? I think that's fair. If we're going to be dropping anywhere from two to $300 or God forbid, four to $500, that's my personal, honest to God, humble opinion. Now, having said that, the only way I would in general make exceptions for that rule for me. And if you've watched me for any length of time, if you, if you know, if you know me, you know my channel, I only ever number one give passes on that. If the perfume is heavily discounted, heavily discounted, if it's heavily discounted, then I don't really feel it's, it's any longer a money issue. And, and it's not just, I could be Mr. Moneybags. And I would probably still feel the same exact way because it just, I want to rationalize that in my head, right? That because, I mean, even if I were rich, maybe I am rich, but <laughs> I could go out and buy, you know, any other scent for three, four, five, six hundred, or even a Roja Dove for like three grand. His, his one offs, not one offs, but I mean, the ones that have the diamond encrusted heads and the solid 24 karat gold or whatever, whatever it is. Some ridiculous. I've even seen a $20,000 Atar online. But that's not the point, guys. The point is I want to feel like it makes sense on some fundamental level for me. Like you pay this much, you get this much value. You pay this much, you kind of expect someone to bring it. Like if I'm going to go buy a $150,000 Tesla or Mercedes-Benz or Audi or BMW, I prefer Tesla because I believe in the future and I believe in EVs and electric. But that's not the point. My point is qualitatively, I think we're all, uh, we have certain expectations when we drop certain amounts of money. It had better be uber high quality. It had better smell better, last better, feel better, uh, do better, go faster, break better, turn better. It better perform better on skin. So <laughs> sorry for that little mini rant, but. So all I'm saying, guys, is that while this is an intriguing, elegant, beautifully crafted, uh, to, a, to a large degree, it's not perfect. And again, I'll get it. I'll touch on that before we close out the night. Scent performance, at least for me, was a major issue. Uh, now, I will say I smell it heavily inside my shirt. When I go in here, I smell it pretty easily, right? But I don't. I don't get any projection right here. That's where I begin to smell it. What is that? I'm like a quarter of an inch off skin thereabouts, maybe half inch at the most. And it's not even pungent. It's not even powerful. I smell it a little bit, but, and again, this wasn't that all. I mean, I only worked an evening shift today, so this isn't that old. And I sprayed fairly heavily. I'm a pretty decent oversprayer. So, Okay, so there's that, right? There's the fact that performance was an issue. However, now getting to another aspect, I don't feel this is the greatest of tobacco scents. It's really good. It's interesting. It's expertly blended. There's a lot going on in here to a fair degree. But do I really in my heart of hearts think that this is better than like Tom Ford's Tobacco Vanille? Better... I don't even know that this is as good an everyday scent. Hate me if you want, guys as Michael Kors for men, the original, not the redo. The original does feature tobacco in it. And for my money, I think it's a wonderful go-to designer that maybe gets punked a lot, you know, slept on, uh, be, you know, berated, just put down, because it's easy. It's no longer easy to get, but once upon a time, it was very easy. It was a pretty 
heavily discounted for fragrance at one point. But we could go on and on and on to the Dior's. We could go through the Aqua, some of the Aqua de Jeux, not, not, not all of them, not Aqua de Jeux. Who am I thinking of? The uh, Giorgio Armani, rather. I think one of his original Four Men or Womo or Co. I don't know. Some, several of those have had uh, a little tobacco in them. Uh, Versace, that's, that stands out to me. Versace's The Dreamer, I, th I think is one of the most spectacular uh, designer fragrances in the world and in, in the history of perfume. If you like the note of tobacco, very unique, maybe not to everyone's taste. I really, really love that. I, at first, I did not like it. I'm not going to lie. At first, I really, really was unimpressed. I waited. I came back and revisited it about maybe a month or two later, and I went, Oh my God, this is incredible. This is absolutely divine. To me, it's divine. I'm sorry, hate me if you want. I think it's freaking phenomenal. And that's just one of the cheapest frags in the world that you can get. At any rate, there's those, those are the two main, main drawbacks for this. And thirdly, is this a memorable, super sexy scent? No, it's not. It's not overly memorable, and for me, it's not that sexy. It's interesting, it's classy, it's a bit mature. It's sensual, but I wouldn't call it sexy. So I think for those reasons, that for myself, this is a no-go. But if you really, you may be more into these types of fragrances than I am. You may just go head over heels for this. By all means, get your noses on this scent on a decant, on a sample, on a carded sample, however you want to do it, get your nose on anything from the house of Yoko 1954. And just let me know what you've, because I haven't sampled more than this. This is my first uh, go round. Uh, I liked it. I, I thought it was very interesting. But would I go out and buy it for 300? I wouldn't even buy this for $150, quite frankly. But I think it may suit someone that has more eccentric taste than myself. Uh, perfectly fine. Again, as long as they don't mind those significant performance issues. Um, yeah. So make that of what you of what you want. But that's my little two cents for this fragrance. Um, Amy, I'm sorry, just getting to the questions, guys. I, I, that was my full review. Bravo. <laughs> We're done for the review. I'll be glad to take any questions, comments, or Recommend recommendations. If you want to just bounce some ideas off, I'll be glad to feel those. Amy asked if she's still watching or you can watch it later. Uh, Leonard uh, says, does the raspberry fade? I don't like that note. Uh, I would definitely say it, it dries down a lot to where it's not as prominent. It's not like overbearing. But buyer beware, it is still slightly present, Amy, even in the deep dry down. I don't know how they do that because normally most fruit fragrances and our smells, because they're really part of the same chemical, you know, you know, chemistry, you know, bioflavonoid families in terms of, you know, fragrances and uh, edibles. I don't know how they did that. Maybe it's easier to fix raspberry than it is notes like citrus, neroli lemon, orange, things like that. But this is this is present all the way down. Yeah, to, to well, no, let me take that back. It's, it is present, but it's, it's way, way more minuscule. This was my respray. This was the original. It's there, but it's way, way down in the dry down. Yeah, I take that back. It's, it's there, but it's very, very, it's very, very soft. It's it's almost gone. It's detectable, but just just barely. So, yeah, but it does last a while, and it uh, the raspberry note diminishes, but it does so fairly slowly. But if you wait long enough, it will be almost totally gone. So if, if that's a serious concern, there's always that. Again, though, sadly, this just didn't push past two hours, and even on skin, it really didn't get past five hours. So, mm, Pretty mediocre performance overall. That's going to do it, guys. It's really late. I want to really, really extend my sincere gratitude for joining me on this on tonight's live cast. Uh, this was episode 231, and hopefully if you drop in maybe tomorrow or the day after, 
I should be dropping the next episode. Possibly, we may be probably taking a look at uh, Lucha Pura, Accendis, or, or Achendis, however you want to say it, uh, which is also tobacco based. That's a different niche house to my name, to my knowledge. Really can't wait to get my nose on that. It's going to ought to be very exciting. Cali Reviews, thanks for joining us here so late. Sorry, wish you'd come in sooner. Thank you so much, guys. Catch me on the next episode. Spray often. Spray well. Live life, live life on your terms, baby, not someone else's. It is way too short or long or mediocre otherwise. Peace out. Love you guys. Y'all are making the channel grow. If you like, please subscribe. Click the bell for future updates, and we'll see you soon.